And now, RFD TV Live. You're looking at a central boiler outdoor furnace. Temperatures are going down and your heating bills perhaps going up. Whether you're heating anything from your home to a large warehouse, Central Boiler has a solution for you. Good evening. Welcome to RFD TV Live. I'm News Director Mark Oppold. We welcome Central Boiler to RFD TV for the first time. And joining us in studio tonight to tell us all about Central Boiler outdoor furnaces, we have the Central Boiler sales representative Mark Miller. And next to Mark, one of Central Boiler's uh, many dealers from across the country is Bill Laurie, comes to us from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Welcome to RFD TV, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Good for having us. Here. Yes. Before we get started, Mark, let's start with you and uh, talk about these uh, products here from Central Boiler. Let's learn about you and, and your background and your work with Central well, Boiler. Well, I'm pretty interesting character. So, <laughs> uh, I grew up on a farm in northwest Minnesota, dairy farm, and uh, ended up going off to college and came back to the dairy farm and then eventually ended up at Central Boiler. And it's been uh, almost 10 years that I've been working wow. at Central Boiler now. Where does the time go? Yeah, it flies fast. Very good. Good to have you with us. Thank you. And Bill uh, Bill Laurie from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin's your home, understand. To tell us about yourself and your dealership. That's right. I was uh, born and raised in the Green Bay, Wisconsin area. Um, being a younger, in my younger years, I was uh, a, a, a big part of a family-owned construction business. And up until about 12 years ago, when we were able to get our, our Central Boiler dealership, and uh, since then, things progressed through the years, and it has turned into our uh, full-time business now. And back home, I have my support team, my wife, and two little boys who are a yeah. big part of the business. They, uh, I'm sure they are. And really, as you look back, I'm sure those years in the construction business have been very helpful as you talk about people and installing the, the uh, central boiler wood furnace. They actually were, because there was a lot of times with a slab set up, uh, even getting involved with installing in-floor heat and things like that. So it, 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 was, uh, it was a help. It's good to have you here as well. Looking Thanks. forward to your input here during the next hour. Mark, let's start with you and uh, just Right from the start here, what is, for our viewers, what is a central boiler outdoor furnace? Well, a central boiler outdoor furnace is a unit that sits outside and it burns wood and heats your entire home and your domestic water, and um, it saves you money. We're going to talk about that and how that all works, but the, the company itself, let's talk about Central Boiler, the company. Central Boiler's been around for nearly 30 years. We're a manufacturer in northwest Minnesota. And uh, we are the world's largest manufacturer of outdoor furnaces. We have an extensive dealership uh, network across the United States and Canada. And um, um, we, we have grown to be the largest manufacturer through uh, quality product, mm -hmm. uh, our, our great dealer network, and of course, happy customers. Our happy customers uh, rave about our products to their neighbors and their friends, and they sell more. And as a result of those happy customers and the word of mouth that they provide, we've uh, become the largest uh, uh, manufacturer. Mm -hmm. You know, and these these have been around. You say the company, it's this company's been around these number of years. So they say, well, wood furnaces. I've heard about that before. But the technology you've been able to incorporate. You know, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, but I want you right now, kind of what sets Central Boiler wood furnaces apart from what people might be used to when we say the word wood furnace? Oh, the efficiency. Uh, our furnaces would burn much less wood than any other one out there. Uh, just the quality um, and our dealer network as well. We offer the best mm -hmm. support for, for the retail customer. And uh, viewers, we are going to be sharing with you later in the hour. Uh, if you're interested in, after what you hear tonight and you're interested in perhaps joining people uh, like Phil and being a central boiler dealer will share with you how that can take place and we'll open up our telephone lines for you as well. Uh, then uh, what about the, uh, or Bill I said, I should say, um, what about the, the outdoor furnace here, Mark, and, and uh, people will say what the difference between the outdoor furnace uh, and the more traditional wood furnace that they're used to? Well, uh, the, or indoor wood stove. Uh, indoor wood stove, sure. The three biggest things are safety, the fire's outside, the, the, the mess is outside, uh, uh, convenience, you don't have to haul the wood in the house and haul the ashes back out. And of course there's a big one, uh, the, the practicality, uh, long burn times, typically with an indoor wood stove you're filling it maybe several times a day. Mm -hmm. With an outdoor furnace you fill it once or twice a day. So it's, it's very convenient, very low maintenance. The thermostat, basically set it and forget it. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Very good. And. Uh, 
You had some comments during our meeting, Bill, that I want you to share as far as the different uses. We had we saw some video there of uh, some of the homes and warehouses. That's, yeah. just, that's just a start. Absolutely. And, and just to add on you know, the, the stuff that Mark was saying here uh, about the advantages of outdoor, I think one of the, the biggest things is uh, heating multiple buildings. Uh, the ability, uh, and it happens more times than not, uh, the customer will have his house and, and even the attached garage, but along with that, an outbuilding, a shop. Um, farmers uh, obviously have their house, shops, uh, calf barn, uh, using a lot of hot water sure. for, for feeding the calves and, and cleaning uh, in the parlor. Um, I, I think back a lot to uh, close-knit neighbors, uh, a lot of multiple homes being heated two homes being heated off of one one central boiler furnace. Right. Um, swimming pools, another great. Yeah, tell us about people, wait, wait a minute, what do you mean swimming pools? How does that work? Well, yeah, it, it, that, uh, that, that's yeah. really a, a great part of it when, um, you know, obviously you're using it in winter for, for heating the house and your hot water, but now now you're able to use it all summer long uh, for, the, for the swimming pool and along with it, uh, we plumb it in a way where you're heating your domestic hot water as well, so it, it, it has a real nice payoff uh, you know, using it year-round. Exactly, which leads me, Mark, to the point that people may say, well, wood furnaces, outdoor wood furnace, they're, they're probably talking across the Dakotas and Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, where all the sales are, and I'm down here, Florida, Alabama, Texas, <laughs> or wherever it might be. Okay. Well, you need heat down here too, right? <laughs> we need heat in, uh, in Nashville at certainly different times. Yes, yeah, so the, the southern part of the country certainly has... Uh, realize the importance of the outdoor furnace and um, have been it's been a great market for us that's that's uh, catching on um, one thing I just wanted to say was that in summary to the advantage over an indoor wood burning appliance mm -hmm. you're gonna have peace of mind with the safety and you're gonna have a higher standard of living because you can set that thermostat and control your heat constantly and evenly and as you talked about earlier today as well, that you can set it at a comfort level. You don't have to be setting it down where you're putting a sweater on or a coat no. to try to save those dollars for your heating bill. An extra Not anymore stick of, with, a yeah. with a central boiler. Right. An extra yeah. stick of wood a day is going to go a long way. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about, well, viewers are going to wonder about uh, how they can save on their, on, their, on their heating bills and with an outdoor furnace. So let's just do talk about that a little bit in more in detail. Well, the savings are... are Great. Uh, our furnaces are, are an investment that pay for themselves rapidly, and they continue to pay them back themselves back. I don't know of any other heating appliance that you can put in that eliminates your heating bills. If you're if you're using propane, natural gas, electricity, and you switch to an outdoor furnace, it's going to eliminate your heating bill. And you can you can really uh, figure out how how much savings you're going to have by going to our website, which is centralboiler.com. We have built a little uh, a little uh, website there. Uh, a savings calculator where you can put in your your usage of how many gallons per month or year, and it'll it'll help you realize your you can see your savings over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit more. You do have a calculator, so it's not just kind of a guess for for our viewers when they go to the website and check that out. Tell us how maybe walk through an example of what might be happening. Well, uh, on the screen we have one there that uh, you you put in the uh, the number of gallons you're burning per year per month, depending on how you figure it, and then mm -hmm. over time. Um, how, how long it takes to pay the furnace off, and then how much money you re realize back per year savings, and then over time it'll it'll show you how much money you have uh, over a period of how many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we know, many of our viewers out there uh, living in rural America, uh, Bill, may be using heating oil, have for years. Uh, yeah, Dad gonna, did, so I am, and you know. Yeah, I was going to add a little bit to as far as the savings goes. I, I've seen so many different uh, scenarios through the years of installing, but uh, what, what sticks in my head is a lot of these older farm homes uh, using fuel oil. Um, some of these people, it's, it's almost to a point where it's, where it's unaffordable. And, uh, you know, like Mark said before, they're living with a the thermostat uh, uh, way down even. You know, I see 60 degrees, you know, and, and who wants to wake up in the morning when it's 60 degrees? But um, $6,000, I, I hear, to heat these homes, you know, in, in a year's time. Um, you can see a pretty fast payback on, on your central boiler, you know, in those situations. Absolutely. It sounds like that. And, and again, 
north or south, east or west, anybody watching this evening, uh, there are potential that it could help them no matter even if their winters aren't as long as they are in the Dakotas, uh, they can certainly, or like you talk, talk about the, the pool situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. There are different uses. And, and again, the size, uh, we'll talk about this later as well, but basically well, how do I know which one, you know, which, which unit is going to be right for me? Obviously, people like yourselves walk them through that process. Yeah, the, uh, the dealer is a, is a great avenue to, to help, you know, uh, figure out the sizing. Um, but once again, there's a great sizing calculator that Central Boiler has online and in the brochures uh, that really uh, plugging in your fuel oil costs or your, your gas costs uh, for the year mm -hmm. uh, pretty much sizes you down well, to what furnace you're looking for. Yeah, well, let's talk about the installation process. You do that uh, hopefully many, many times a year, yeah, and it's getting yeah. more and more every year for after yeah. 11 or 12 years. So let's talk about uh, how it's installed. What's the process? Yeah, really, the first step is, is deciding where you want to put the thing. Um, convenience is, is the first the first thing to be thinking about. Uh, some people are putting it uh, very close to the home. Some people, it's more convenient to put it uh, even hundreds of feet away from the home. But, but really, it's uh, getting a base ready for the stove, uh, for the stove to sit on. Um, the trenching. Uh, to get the uh, the water lines, uh, you know, into the house with our uh, our insulated underground piping, which we call thermal packs, and I think we're going to touch on that a little bit more later. Uh, once we're into the house, it's it's uh, tying into the existing heating system, whether it's a forced air system. That's also a good question that people ask a lot: is you know, because we're using hot water, can it be used for forced air? And, and yes, it. Uh, those are the most common installs, uh, converting over to forced air with a water to air heat exchanger. So how does it work then? Using that as an example, you know, how how, how will it work in a, in a house in that in that manner, or a couple of different examples, if you would? Yeah, because what we're dealing with is a, a firebox surrounded by a water jacket. Now that water is is pumped through the through the thermal packs underground into the house and into the existing heating system, and now you're you're thermostatically controlled. Uh, without turning on the gas. Uh, your fan kicks on and, and that's what's giving you the heat up into your house and uh, even a boiler system. Uh, tying into an existing boiler system is very simple too, um, be it uh, baseboard heat or, or in-floor hydronics. Uh, water heater, everybody, almost everybody does the water heater, the domestic hot water. So there's uh, just hooking it into every existing system you have and, and that takes care of it. What about the, uh, the time that would, you know, if somebody was going to start Day one, uh, how, yeah. how quick can they be? They put in a, a unit like this. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would have to say the the most common basic of installs is, is a full day. Uh, is is very common. Some installs get really simple, and maybe we can do it less than than a day. Some installs take uh, a couple or even a few days. And, and as and as far as installs go. For me, I do most of the installs. It seems like most customers just kind of want the peace of mind that. It's, it's in and, and done right, and sure. they're not making 100 trips to the hardware store for, for supplies. Uh, but there are customers that do it themselves, and um, really when I think back, I, I think the biggest thing that happens is I work together with the customer. Um, he wants to be a part of it. He can understand what's happening better. He saves money. Uh, it's done right. And uh, in the end, everybody's ahead. Peace of mind. Yeah. You mentioned that cement slab uh, earlier and doing con construction work. Is that a necessary part of the installation, the no. cement slab? No, cement slab is, is not necessary. I, I think ultimately it's the, probably the nicest way to do it, but um, a, a good base of, of crushed stone, gravel, um, a nice uh, uh, base of patio block is, is a great way. Um, some dealers actually, like myself, we stock uh, precast slabs. We, we, Hmm, we, okay. we, sure. we precast slabs and we deliver them out when we when we bring the stove. So that's another option. You mentioned that thermopex and and to get you know, really down to what that is all about. That's a very important part of the installation process. Walk us it's, through it's, that. It's a huge part. Um, you know, we're talking about the the best, most efficient furnaces that are available, and there's nothing. The underground piping is just as important as the furnace. What, what you see is important. What you don't see is as important. Just as important. Yeah, everything is for nothing if you're cheating on the underground pipe. And this, this thermal PEX, uh, the way it's super insulated. We have some video here that's going to explain that. Yeah, there they are speak. putting it in the trench. Um, so, yeah, it's really, and you can see we're not going very deep with it there neither. Um, a foot, foot and a half deep trench uh, just to get enough black ground back on top for the grass to grow back. Um, you know, when we get the driveways, heavy compaction, then we will, we will swoop a little bit deeper. Uh, but really, it's uh, even, oh, uh, winter installs, 
you know, a guy does a quite a few of those each year. The ground is froze. Um, we lay it right on top. Um, there's no more heat loss laying right on top than, than if it and was. And then just uh, bury it in the spring. And then come back in spring and bury it. So it's never too late to put one in, I guess is the, the moral of that uh, little story. And you, and you shared that uh, you do, and, and, and you as well, Mark, that many times when a customer comes that they've had another, another brand and has been in for X number of years, but many times it's that underground that, the, in your case, the thermal effects, but the underground piping is just worn out and you're, you're having to replace that uh, more times than not. Yeah, and Mark, Mark, yeah. you have some pretty good insight on the other well, brands. Well, it's, it's very important when um, considering or purchasing an outdoor furnace that you use the correct kind of underground piping. Um, when we when we developed thermal packs, we we tested it among other brands, and and the thermal packs in a hundred foot length, you're going to lose less than one degree Fahrenheit. So there's very little heat loss. A lot of other brands out there over time fills with water. And uh, I like, an analogy I like to use is it's like trying to heat a trout stream. The groundwater is moving through there and it's it's uh, very bad. Mm -hmm. It's going to increase your wood consumption. So make sure you, you select the thermal packs when you look at underground piping. You've, I know you have some examples of where you've dug up other brands. Yeah, Mark was alluding to that a little bit. But yeah, um, it, it happens every year, um, at least a few times each year. Um, people are, um, you can see the grass growing, you know, in, in the middle of winter and you know something's up and, and uh, we end up digging it up, putting in the thermal packs and, and I always get the same reaction from people. It's like, I tried saving a little bit of money up front and now I ended up spending twice as much as what I needed to. Very good. We're visiting with our friends from Central Boiler coming up. We're going to take our first break here. Coming up, we'll discuss the investment and savings that you can expect from installing a uh, Central Boiler outdoor furnace. A little bit more about the, uh, again, the uh, investment here, where you can order one. We'll share that with you as well and information about how you may become a Central Boiler dealer like Bill here tonight. This is RFD TV Live with Central Boiler on Rural America's most important network. Stay with us. Um, got all the hot water I need. Heats my house. Love it. I mean, it's fantastic. I heat both my home and my shop with the E-Classic, which saved me about $3,000 last year. I probably saved $2,500 to $3,000 in fuel costs over the winter. I figured it, I saved probably $5,000 last year on oil, maybe a little bit more. The furnace was $11,000, so this year it should pay for itself. Easy to run, easy to yeah. load. I load right. it. Yeah. Myself, I um, was a little scared at first, but open the door, throw the wood in, and shut the door, and you're done. Away she goes. Everyone knows that this is what heats your home in the winter, but what you might not know is that this furnace is fueled by wood. It's connected to a central boiler outdoor furnace. Are you tired of spending $750 or more a month filling this propane tank? By installing a central boiler, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Heat your home and have an endless supply of hot water, and it won't cost you a thing. For more information, log on to centralboiler.com. They didn't invent fire, just a better way to use it. Great to have you with us this evening as we welcome for the first time to RFD TV Live Central Boiler. Before we maybe go on to our next question here, uh, Mark, I want to go back to uh, people that joining us along the way and other talking about outdoor wood furnaces. Let's let's tell them again, uh, maybe maybe as the dealer, what we're talking about here, the outdoor wood furnace and, and basically how it works, Bill. Yeah, in, in a nutshell, it's uh, the unit placed outside any distance from the home, keeping the mess, uh, the dangers outside, and and uh, piping the uh, the uh, water through uh, underground piping into the house, and uh, tapping into the existing heating system, and giving you 100% of your your heat and hot water. Very good. So that leads us, Mark. Then, uh, how does it actually heat a domestic water system? Well, that's a real nice benefit of the outdoor furnace is that you can heat 100% of your domestic water. When I say domestic water, I mean the water you use for washing dishes, the water you use for washing clothes, the water you use for showering. And the way we do that is we put a water-to-water -water heat exchanger, also known as a sidearm exchanger, on the water heater itself. So the two waters are outdoor furnace water and your domestic water run side by side in the heat exchanger. They never mix, they never touch, they just run side by side in okay. a tube. And we transfer that energy, that heat, into your domestic water. 
works very well. And again, may people, uh, viewers, just joining us, we talked about not only uh, you think when you talk about the words wood furnace, outdoor wood furnace, you're talking about the northern states and back down to the I-70, you know, but not south of the Mason-Dixon line, but swimming pools, uh, another application that uh, we want to make sure things like that, and, and I'm sure there are a lot more, that these can be the, the benefits of an outdoor furnace. Again, with a, uh, with a pool or a hot tub, a swimming pool, we use a water-to-water -water heat exchanger, and it works, it works very well. Uh, pools uh, are notorious for a lot of energy consumption, mm -hmm. and we can, again, eliminate that heating bill with the use of an outdoor furnace. What, before we go on to the next one here, uh, back to you, Bill, and, and we talk about heating the home, but when, you, when people start uh, when describing uh, or experiencing what Mark describes here as far as hot water for their showers and their washing machines and, and anything else in the home, you know, what kind of reactions are you hearing from those people? <laughs> I'll tell you, the, uh, the, the farmers, you get the biggest reaction Do out you? of. Oh, yeah, because they're doing laundry. 24/7, basically, <laughs> and, and I, I, I get reports uh, seriously of uh, eighty dollars a month in in uh, in domestic water, and uh, just because uh, the wife is one pair of pants is dirty and it and it goes, you know, and uh, they're just going through a lot of hot water that way. And that's that's probably the biggest thing that sticks in my mind about uh, about savings, uh, you know, on the water heater. A house with teenage girls that take long showers is also a good I example hear that one a lot of where too. you can have a lot of savings. Yeah, yeah. there That's you go. Another, you know, people are sitting up. Okay, maybe let's let's put that to task here, and uh, yeah. I'm gonna give them people give those people a call. Okay, so uh, Bill, back to you again. And there's wood burning, uh, wood furnaces here. How much wood would you say to help our viewers to to provide 100 percent of the heat and uh, domestic water we're talking about here to get the job done I, I get that question daily believe it or not i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> um wood consumption is really all over the board of course um we can talk about your your well insulated uh smaller homes uh or we can talk uh, on the flip side your your large farm homes very poorly insulated uh, large hookups, shops, homes, uh, but really to have a starting point, you know, in a nutshell for wood consumption, I always use the one quart a month uh, rule. Uh, I think that's kind of a middle of the road type, you know, average, very ballpark, but it varies from there. Mm -hmm. uh, less on the more efficient homes, you know, more on the uh, on the less efficient homes, and that's really what we look at. Square footage, yes, means it does mean something to us, but ultimately, uh, the efficiency of those homes is is probably the key factor. Yeah, there's so many variables. Uh, what year was the house built? Uh, what do you have for insulation? Is it newspaper or is it spray urethane foam? Um, you know, the windows, the quality of the windows, all those factors. Sure. It really is the heat load. The heat load of the structure determines how much wood you're going to burn. And a, what, is there a, a, a kind of wood that they, uh, well, I don't have a lot of trees, I don't have a lot of wood uh, in my area here in the south or wherever it might be. What do, you, what do you say to those people? Any kind of wood. Our systems are designed to burn wood. Uh, dry wood is always better, but any kind of wood. We mentioned uh, before going to break, uh, Mark, that we wanted to talk about the investment that people should expect here. Uh, it's always, uh, obviously, the, one of the first questions I'm sure people like Bill gets. But uh, let's talk about that in, in the investment in a central boiler wood furnace. Well, investment's a really good word to use because it is an investment, and it pays for itself. It pays itself back and continues to pay you money back over time by, by eliminating your heating bills. Um, but the furnace itself starts at just under $5,500. We have a, a, a range of models, so it's between uh, $5,500 and just under that, up to just under $15,000 for the unit itself. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the installation and, and the parts and pieces vary on every one. I'm going to turn that over to Bill because he deals with that on a daily basis. Sure. Yeah, I think um, once again, there certainly is a broad spectrum there of, uh, you know, of costs associated with the install. But uh, a lot of them are your basic installs, uh, just an average distance away from the house and tapping into an existing uh, easy forced air system. Uh, $1,800 is a pretty good rule of thumb starting out at. Uh, certainly, you get into multiple buildings and larger applications, and it goes up from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, two things. How would they know which unit to put in uh, oh, for yeah. the size? Yeah, certainly. Um, sizing the unit, honestly, doing it, having done this a long time, I do a lot of sizing just off of I know what their fuel bills are. I kind of can tell 
okay, this house is going to take this size stove. But, but ultimately, the sizing chart that Central Boiler has available to us, uh, it, it's on their website, it's in their brochures. Uh, that really is the right the there. You see it. it. Yeah, um, it, it. You punch in your your previous year's heating costs, and uh, it, it spits out a number and tells you what range of what size stove you should uh, you should be looking at. So you take your coldest month, let's say January, figure out how many gallons of fuel oil you burned that month, or propane, or kilowatts of electricity, or uh, natural gas, how many um, therms, or how many cords of wood. Plug it in that for your coldest month, and that'll give you a sizing value. And that's available on our website, centralboiler.com, and it's also available in our brochures, which are available through our dealers. Um, very good, and we'll, we'll be uh, giving that website again. As you mentioned, it's on the website. They can go back and check that out. Again, we'd like to have you join us here on RFD TV Live, our telephone number, for you to do that and talk to uh, Mark and to Bill, 877-731-6733. We have a caller on the line. I think was it was from North Carolina, am I correct? That's right. Very good. Welcome to RFD TV, Rick. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, actually, I had a couple questions. Uh, one was uh, like the routine maintenance. Um, is that very hard to do? And how often do you have to clean it out, or you know, things like that? Very good. Very little maintenance. Um, daily maintenance would be, uh, of course, putting in wood, and you want to. Uh, um, daily do a, a run a cleaning rod or a, a rake through the bottom of the firebox to loosen up, loosen up the ash bed uh, and check your water quality we want to have good water in the furnace but overall the maintenance is, is, is quite low. Anything you want to add to that Bill? I was just saying the only other thing about uh, ash removal um, does not happen very often in most cases I, I hear customers talking about cleaning ashes out uh, three or maybe four times a, a, a season uh, so, you know, every month and a half, I would say, and I don't know about you, Mark, because you're operating a stove too, but that's about, you know, as far as maintenance, it's cleaning ash out, doing your quick stir. Um, you might run a brush up and down the chimney once a year, possibly, maybe once every two years, and uh, a good cleaning in spring when you shut it down. Yeah, the cleaning, the, the, uh, cleaning of the ash out of the firebox would depend a lot on your heat load. A lot of our answers go back to the heat load. How much wood are you burning? You know, how much of a building are you heating? How big is your heat load? So that would determine a little bit of your uh, maintenance. All right, thanks for that call. Let's go to Virginia. Doug has been on the line here and giving us a call. Doug, welcome. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, just wanted to know, uh, I'm assuming there's a recirculator pump or something involved. What happens when the electricity goes out? Is there a backup mm -hmm. system? Yeah, um, I'll tell you, I have a lot of customers because that circulating pump draws it depends on the exact size, but maybe under an amp. And uh, what a lot of people will do is they will uh, buy a simple car inverter, uh, just enough to plug that pump in and keep that water circulating, uh, you know, to help keep it from uh, freezing in a power outage. Yeah, our most common uh, pump size is 75 watts, so it's very little, the very little power. All right, we uh, move on to Maryland for our next call. Uh, Fred uh, has been on the line here, and we're glad you called, Fred. Welcome. Yes, how y'all doing tonight? Yes, you're doing fine. Thanks for the call. Good. Uh, look, I um, I live out in the woods. I'm out, out in the woods. I I have a well. I'm on a well, and but and I have plenty of timber. So, uh, could this thing benefit me? Because I'm uh, like I say, my house is totally electric. Yes, I. Actually, you mind if I take this one? No, go ahead, Bill. I just I had a quick I had a quick thought. <laughs> no, go ahead. You've run into this I, before too. So. I, I I've run into through the years uh, actually quite a few homes that are all electric, and uh, there's different options. Uh, one great option, and it depends if you have a crawl space or a basement, but but uh, under under the joists, uh, under the subfloor heating is a, a great way to do it. Uh, there's different exact ways of doing it, but in a nutshell, that's a good way. Another way that we've done a lot of times with old farm homes where there is no central heating system, we will just uh, put a separate heater in each room. Uh, we call them panel heaters or, uh, or small forced air uh, uh, heaters, and that's another good way to, to do homes like that. Baseboards are also an option. Uh, there's always a way to make it work in your in your home, and your dealer can can uh, go through those options with you. Very good. What about the remoteness of uh, uh, Fred in that example? Uh, um, that had anything to do with anything different? Uh, he sounded like he was out 
pretty in a remote area, a lot of wood around him, a lot of woods around him, but does that make any difference? No, I would not an issue really at all. I, I, we have units tight in different situations, in, in tight in uh, cedar woods and, and things like that. And you know, as far as draft and things like that, everything is, is always always works out well. I, I would say there's no concern there. Great. It sounds right. like he has great access to wood, so yeah. it's a no-brainer in his case. Yeah, you're exactly right. Let's go to Washington. Uh, Jake, thank you for calling, and uh, you're on with our friends from Central Boiler. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm uh, getting ready to build a new shop. I planned on heating through the concrete floor, uh, radiant heat. I was wondering if your boiler would be able to tie into that as far as uh, heating the fluid that they pump through that system. So you're you're tying into a radiant system in the uh, tubing, right? Is that what is that what he said? Yeah, yeah, it'd be going uh, heat through the concrete floor. Oh, perfect! That's a great application for our system. Absolutely. Okay, it would it would tie in there. From what I understand, they don't use straight water, but you'd still have a, a way of heating whatever that is that they pump through there. No, we generally do use straight water with just a slight amount of. Uh, uh, corrosion inhibitor in the water jacket. Uh, so you can you can run antifreeze in a system if you'd like, but m the majority of our customers do run just just water. Oh, they do. Okay. Yes. And uh, heating a big shop about 8,400 square feet. Am I going to be feeding logs into that thing all day? <laughs> no, very unlikely. It, again, it goes back to that answer that I've said. It, it depends on the heat load. If it's a well insulated shop. Uh, with with uh, a styrofoam underneath the floor, underneath the tubing, underneath the cement, um, it's going to be fine. It, it, so there's one thing I can just add to that real quick is the insulation under the slab is crucial. Uh, don't let people talk you into to bubble wrap or, or anything like that. Uh, keep it keep it to two inch uh, styrofoam, and more importantly, make sure you you add uh, insulation around the perimeter of the slab when you're when you're done. Very important, very, very important. And you know what comes right back? You, you spend a lot of time in the construction business uh, with your family and um, other people that, uh, trying to heat floors, mm -hmm. uh, cement floors in different manner. And so uh, great, uh, great call to share that expertise and, and what you've seen in, in your yeah. dealership. Yeah, it all kind of does go back to that a little bit, <laughs> you know, it all helps. All right, very good. Let's give you our telephone number for you to join us. We'd love to hear from you. We, uh, from your questions, uh, learn a lot about the, a great product and the different applications. 877-731-6733. Excuse me, 877-731-6733. Let's go to, is it Farland? Did I get that, hear that right, Farland? Yeah, you got it. All right. You're well, welcome. We're from Georgia, so you're, right, you're right. down there in the south, and uh, your question for our panel. Yeah, what uh, you say it's thermostat control. We say if you set it at 70 degrees, when you're when it cuts off, what ha what happens to the heat while your system is cut off? It's still making heat. Are, where, where, where does this heat go? Are are you dealing with a, a forced air system or is that a boiler system? I'm, I'm I guess. It, well, I've got central heat in my house. I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, they will not uh, put any heat into the house unless the fan is actually blowing through our, our heat exchanger coil in the furnace. In other words, the wood is still burning, you're still making heat outside in your heater, right? Yes, the, the, the outdoor furnace will maintain its, its temperature, whatever the setting may be, usually around 180. And uh, yeah, that, that is not connected to the house in any way. Your thermostat just simply controls uh, your fan to, uh, to kick on and off. Very good. Uh, that would uh, you, know, you get questions like that? I'm sure those kinds of questions here. What happens? Where does that heat go? But it is it thermos, it's, the thermostat is like a thermostat would normally be now, no matter if it's forced air or what the system might be. Yeah, the heat is essentially uh, kept within the system unless it's it's pulled off with uh, with the in, with the inside system. Yeah, once the outdoor furnace has reached its set point, which is typically 185 degrees Fahrenheit, if that point. Um, the dampers would shut down on the system on the outdoor furnace and no more air would be introduced into the firebox. And that bed of coals would, of course, stay alive. And once the damper opens back up on the system, then the fire would reignite. Very good. Brian from Minnesota, we go to our phones. Uh, thanks for holding. You're up next. You there, Brian? Yep, yep. I was just uh, wondering if you'd touch a little bit more on the, the anti situation. I'm uh, from northern Minnesota and just putting in a, a stove and your different opinions on everything, and I was just uh, looking for your opinion on that. Where are you calling from, Brian? What part of Minnesota? Uh, the, the 
Boston Trail area, Yoli. Well, that's beautiful country down there. Um, most uh, customers choose not to use antifreeze. They just use straight water. Uh, one of the things, keep in mind, if you choose not to burn wood, if it's hooked up according to the owner's manual, um, your indoor system will take over and heat your home. And at the same time, on our outdoor furnace, the circulator pump continues to run continuously, so it will draw heat from the indoor system. This winter, set your thermostat at whatever temperature you like, without worrying about the cost. Unlike heating your home with natural gas or propane, the Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnace provides a safe, efficient, and most importantly, an inexpensive way to heat your home, garage, or entire water supply. The furnace is located outside, so you can forget about any odors or smoke coming into your house. For more information, log on to centralboiler.com. They didn't invent fire, just a better way to use it. Welcome back to RFD TV Live. Central Boiler, our guest on the program this evening, and uh, we appreciate the calls and hope to hear from you before our time is up. Time is getting short here. Our toll free number for you to join us is 877 731 6733. A lot of applications around different parts of the country. Uh, Central Boiler in every state of the United States here, and uh, I mentioned you even have a uh, out, you think you know, installation even in Hawaii. Uh, we, we've heard rumors that we do, yeah. Every state in the union and, and, and probably Hawaii, yeah. too, the way it sounds. So. Mark, uh, Mark Miller uh, with us. Uh, and uh, let's talk about, before we get to our next caller here, where, where can uh, viewers buy a furnace uh, like they see tonight? Well, probably not too far from their home. We have a dealer network across the whole United States and Canada. And in order to find your closest dealer, you can either call our toll-free number, 800-248-4681, or our, our dealer website, centralboiler.com, our, our, our website, centralboiler.com, where you can uh, log on to our uh, dealer locator, and it'll tell you who your closest dealer is. Very good. And if someone wants to, watching, wants to, uh, is, is interested in becoming a dealer, we, we uh, said we would talk about that, so let's do. Uh, and I don't hear from, uh, from Bill is on that, but what would be the process if they're interested in being a dealer? Well, we, we do have select um, locations available for dealerships across uh, the United States and Canada. And if somebody's truly interested in becoming a dealer, uh, uh, give us a call at the factory. Again, our toll-free number, which I believe came up or will come we'll up be, again at yeah, some we'll point. Be show, we'll be showing, uh, um, sharing that uh, here before the show is over. Because we'll, we'll take a look at the area and see if it's a good fit or not. Bill has been a dealer since 99, and maybe you want to share some of your... Uh, I was, was going to say before, you can just direct all the... All the inquiries all over to me if you want. That'd go over well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about uh, 11, 12 years, uh, kind of how things started. Yeah. You, you, you're a user. You have one of these, but and, and that was well before you were a dealer. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a true believer now because that's the way we ended up doing it, but, but using the product and, and knowing what it can really do for you. Like I say, we, we bought ours in, in 98 and uh, used it for, uh, for a full year. And uh, realized what this what this thing was going to do for us, and and and, and you start thinking long term, uh, ten years down the road, uh, my goodness, the the savings was going to oh. be astronomical, and and we just wanted to be a bigger part of that, and and uh, we were very lucky to uh, to get a Central Boiler dealership uh, in '99, and uh, of course it it started out you know uh, small. Uh, part-time basis and uh, I think that first year we, we maybe sold just uh, a handful of furnaces and and through the years uh, you know every year we could see a, a definite percentage of, yeah. uh, of, of increase yeah. every, uh, it's, it's a steady increase every year a steady or? increase each year and and uh, and now it's it's just been uh, I'd say in the last eight years it turned full time for us and it's uh, this is all that we do now is sell and install uh, central boilers. Go ahead, Mark. I, I was just going to say Bill is is one of those stories that where the 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 neighbor neighbors see the furnaces they hear about them. You know, Bill or a customer would talk about the furnace and the word of mouth would start to spread. Bill took it a step further and became a dealer, and, and it's just been fun to watch over the years how much how much he's grown. And but again, beyond again the interest and in finding out if there's an availability in the area where our viewer might live, a lot of dealer support, dealer networking, that you work with that person, working them, walking along every step of the way to make sure that they're going to have a successful business. Oh, yeah, tr where you're very good dealer support uh, training, um, Co-op advertising, etc. We just do a lot of a lot of uh, dealer support out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I can I can really attest to that. That Central really 
has my back. You know, there's just uh, a lot of things along the way that uh, the support I need is, is always there. Is that common, Mark? Do you think a lot of the dealers will, in, starting out, they just owned one and said, and then saw the benefits and said, I, I really believe in this and I want to share with as many people as I can and become a dealer? Oh, it's very common, very common. And that's, I think that passion is what has made our dealer network and, and the company so successful because mm -hmm. the, the, the users and the dealers really believe in the product. They're seeing that payback, that savings over time. That investment. Very good. Bill, what do you think about these new, uh, the new models coming out here, the E-Classic? I, uh, I really can't say enough about them. Um, we actually, once again, we, uh, we switched over uh, from our traditional Classic uh, here about three years ago to, uh, to an E-Classic and just uh, to keep up on things. And uh, I'll admit, I, I wasn't totally sure about it, uh, but boy, it, it did not take long uh, you wouldn't be able to pry that thing out of my yard. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> All right. the, the, the savings is uh, is really above and beyond of uh, what the class. All available, uh, Mark, on the website. There's new information as well. Centralboiler.com. Yes. Mm. All right. Let's go to Colorado. James, thank you for holding, and you're up next. Welcome. Howdy. Hi, James. Yeah, I was uh, wondering what it would take to become a dealer. All right, we've covered some of that. Let's do it again, uh, well, James in Colorado. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Friday. The office is open. Give us a call, 800-248-4681. Ask for the sales department, and uh, we'll give you some more details on that. Uh, somebody should be there at 7 Central. Very good. We'll give that number that number again before the program is over. Again, uh, maybe James just joining us, but maybe walk through the, a quick process what happens if he would call or anyone of our viewers calling and say, I, I think I'd like to be a dealer or at least learn more about it. What would be the steps you would take? Well, we want to look at the area. We, we certainly don't want to stack dealers on top of each other. We sure. want to have a, you know, a nice area to, uh, to sell furnaces in. We take a look at the area and make sure it's not being serviced by another dealer. And if it's not, then we would send you out a packet uh, with some paperwork to fill out and then uh, send that back in. And then we would we'd talk some more. All right. What if uh, uh, a viewer wants to see someone uh, we may ask both of you i'll start with you though mark if uh or uh no well, let's start with the dealer I'll deflect it to yeah, okay, you're gonna do just, it anyway so bill deal. if somebody wants to see one of these and and, and see it operational um a central boiler furnace yeah. wood furnace what would you say to them well that's really what it takes um for me and i know central boiler as a company um satisfied happy customers uh just ecstatic about their savings is is what it takes uh, people need to hear that and uh, really just contacting the, the local dealer uh, asking about some uh, you know getting a list of names and numbers they won't have a problem getting you you know happy customers uh, to talk to um, and that's really uh, gonna be the best way to uh, to get a real peace of mind of, of what you're going to be investing yeah, in. Yeah, and what's the reaction when they do see one uh, as you as you visit with these people? Uh, are there reoccurring uh, reactions that, that you hear from people once they do see it in action? Oh, yeah. it's. Uh, I think the biggest reaction comes from when they start talking numbers. You wow. Know, for, yeah, wow. you know, it's like, okay, so we were, I mean, because you can just do it in your head and start adding up even just a house that takes a couple or a few thousand dollars a year to heat and and all of a sudden they had it for yeah we've had it for 10 years and then you know the potential customers is you know they're thinking my goodness these people just saved you know twenty thirty thousand dollars in the last 10 years and, and, and you have uh, a uh, at your dealership i've been there a few times over the years and you have a board on the wall with uh, a bunch of pictures and testimonials from customers yeah should have brought that we, with yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was a fit in here no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's huge that's huge for for us as a dealer uh doing the shows um i know we've sold countless furnaces i really i, I think 70 80 percent of my sales come from word of mouth and, and, and hearing, you know, the good reports of... of and now uh, from RFD-TV. Right. <laughs> yes. That's right. Yes. Very good. Uh, we're going to go to Wyoming. Carl's been holding on here and has a question for you tonight. Hi, Carl. Yes. Can you explain how the center boiler works with the forced air furnace again? Oh, that's, sure. a, that's a good one. Um, Bill? No. <laughs> that's fine. You want me to take it? Sure, take it. All right. It's um, really, because like we say, we're, we're pumping the water underground uh, into, the, into the house. And, and 
what we're doing is we're converting that hot water over to forced air by means of sliding in a, uh, a heat exchanger coil, if you will, uh, right into the plenum of your existing furnace. Uh, we just get control of your fan off of a second thermostat upstairs. Uh, that new thermostat will only kick that fan on and off uh, as needed without, without kicking the gas on. It's, it's one of the simpler installs. It's a very, very yeah. simple installation. Yeah, what happens in the home, uh, Carl, obviously, uh, would, how would you describe that to them? That What happens actually in the, to, to hook up to his existing furnace? The, what, what has to be done? It's slide a radiator into your furnace plenum, it's basically. A, it's, it's a simple matter of, yeah, I mean, our coils are only four inches thick. Okay. It's a simple matter of uh, sizing the coil accordingly, so we have a nice, a nice uh, as tight fit as we can. Cutting your four-inch slot, putting a couple runners in, sliding in the coil, fastening it in, running our water lines to it. There you go. A very simple installation. Uh, Carl could get on your website and find a dealer near, yes, near him could, in, in Wyoming. He certainly could. You could also look on uh, one of our pages. I believe it's How It Works is the link. It'll cl click on that. It'll show you a diagram of a common forced air installation system. So take a look at that. All right. We have just a couple of minutes before we need to say goodnight here. Let's go to our, get as many calls as we can. Helen from Kentucky, thank you for holding. You're up next. Yes, I was wondering if this unit has its own thermostat or does it operate off of your existing uh, furnace thermostat? Well, the furnace itself uh, has its own aquastat, aquastat, which controls the water temperature. We want to keep the water temperature at about 185 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as the indoor system, I'll let you... Yeah, the indoor system mm -hmm. and, and the outdoor system are not tied together in any way. The indoor system, like I said, it has its own thermostat. We're, we're controlling your indoor, uh, in most cases, your, your fan on your forced air furnace. The central boiler sitting outside, like Mark said, has its own aquastat, and no matter what, it's, it's controlling its own temperature. Yeah, it maintains its own temperature. Yeah. Yeah. What's the most common, if we have time for one more call, we'll take it here, so let me know uh, back there if we can take one more, but just real quick, the common questions that you might get from people uh, before they uh, decide that they want to put one of these in their, uh, in their home or in a warehouse, Bill, what is on the questions they have for you? Well, I mean, all the, uh, the installation questions, of course, you know, what, what, how are we going to hook it up and, you know, like some of the calls that we're getting here, um, really savings, this really comes down you know, to being comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, Mark talked earlier, being comfortable, and uh, what's the savings? We had a caller that uh, couldn't hang on here, but wondering again, and we would cover this, but it's a question that several people have is what, is there any kind of special wood I need to have for, for this furnace, Mark? Any kind of wood, um, any kind of wood is fine. It's designed to burn wood, and any kind of wood is, is fine. The drier the wood, the better. You're gonna burn less wood by dr burning dry wood, but any kind of wood is, is fine. Doesn't Pine. Uh, oak, any kind of wood. All right, we're going to wrap things up here. It's time to, we have, and the hour goes fast, and thank you all the callers who were able to uh, get in tonight. And again, if you were not able to join us, we have a little solution for you here, so stand by. We're not done uh, helping you yet, so don't go away. But before we uh, have to say goodnight, I want to give each of you an ample, uh, ample opportunity to have some closing thoughts to share with viewers, and uh, we'll start with you, Bill. Good to have you here. Uh, Bill Laurie from uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go Packers. I'm sure yeah, you're a big no, Packer yeah. fan. So I'm surprised, you're not, surprised you're not wearing green here Absolutely. tonight or yellow. Well, I, I got my green shirt on underneath Okay. Here, so. your, your closing thoughts for viewers. You'd like to leave with them. Vikings. <laughs> Come on, no. Um, I think the one thing that I would want a, a viewer to, to take with them from the show, you know, just in a nutshell, is... You do not have to live with that thermostat turned down because it happens everywhere. People are living so cold. Um, you can put one of these in, like we said, it supplies 100% of your heat and hot water. Um, has a great return on the initial investment. And um, there really is nothing else out there. I, I've been doing this long enough. It's the only thing that has this kind of a payback and, and gives you the, the complete comfort. Great. Bill, good to have you with us tonight. Thanks, Thanks for, for being me. with us. You Thank bet. You. Hope to see you again. Mark Miller, you have the last word here from Central Border. Great to have Central Border on RFD-TV. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much for having us on. It was a good chance to... Ver 
us to get on and tell our story and, and uh, meet you people. Very, very nice facility, and thank you for having us. You're you most welcome. Your, your closing thoughts. My closing thought is, and, and Bill can maybe nod his head in agreement, but it's, it's been fun over the years uh, working with Central Boiler. We do a lot of shows across Wisconsin, of course, and across the whole United States. And people come up to us and they shake our hands and they thank us and it really makes you feel good because you're saving them money and, and um, you're, you're raising their standard of living by getting that thermostat up where it belongs. So if one of our viewers out there, any of the viewers are interested, give us a call, uh, call toll free number 800-248-4681 and, and we'll get you uh, to join the central boiler with the local dealer. Very good. Thanks for both for being with us. And again, as I mentioned, the toll-free number, let's show that to you again, is 800-248-4681. Normally operational during regular business hours, but there are central boiler uh, representatives that will be answering that line for RFDT viewers tonight only for a few minutes uh, after the show. So again, keep that number handy. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, again, Central Boiler, uh, keep that uh, number and website handy as well. I'm Mark Offold. Good night from RFD-TV, Rural America's most important network. Are you tired of spending hundreds of dollars each month heating your home and water? Well, I have an answer. It's time to start saving on your heating costs and join the thousands that have chosen to install a Central Boiler Outdoor Furnace. Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces provide you with the safest, cleanest, and most efficient way to heat your entire home, garage, and water supply. For more information, log on to centralboiler.com. They didn't invent fire, just a better way to use it.